Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Secrets of a Witch podcast with me, Sabrina Scott, where I talk all about life, love, healing, magic, witchcraft, tarot, and everything in between, as we do. There are birds chirping, my cats are meowing. As per the huge, happy fucking Monday. If you guys are listening to this on time, (laughs) it's the beginning of a new week, second week of April, so much vibe changes happening, like lately, it's been a bit interesting, Easter, aka Christian Vibe Weekend, as I've been calling it, is now over, and you'll want to keep your eyeballs and your ears on YouTube today, because I will be, or already have, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, posted a tarot and oracle card vibe check reading for the coming week. So you'll definitely want to watch that. Everyone has loved them so far, and so go check it out. My YouTube is youtube.com slash Sabrina Scott. Pretty simple. So check it out, check it out, check it out. So I hope y'all had a fucking great weekend. It's nice to be back. I did take the occasional day off and I'm thinking about what my schedule will be going forward. I know releasing a new podcast episode every single day is probably not sustainable. So I'm like, do I want to take weekends off? What do I want to do? We'll figure it out and I'll keep you posted on what to expect. But yes, yes, friends. So for today's episode, I want to talk about something I've been thinking about a lot that is related to the brand new massive fucking course that I'm going to be launching really soon that I have been, to be honest, too much of a chicken shit to launch until now, even though it's been in my head for like more than a year, which is a giant course on feminine energy. So it'll probably be called feminine energy without bullshit just because the format is really kind of like the same as my other two without bullshit courses and so just to keep expectations in line with like what it actually fucking is that's kind of what I'm thinking but the other name for this course would be goddess rising and that was actually the most popular name I did a vote on Instagram stories over the weekend and everyone loved that though I think the um feminine energy without bullshit came in second which is cool So who knows, maybe I'll just blend them when I launch it, I don't know. But one of the things with that whole, like, bubble, the whole, like, cloud of feminine energy topics, like, the stuff I want to think about, I just have been designing the curriculum and working on that, and I've also been testing out my ideas with people in the DMs, and there is this girl I follow on the good old Instagrams, who is pretty interesting. She's anonymous. I don't actually know anything about her. Um, She's probably, there's no way she's listening to this podcast. (laughs) I don't want to say too much, but basically she is someone who used to be in the sugar baby, um, like sex work space. And she's now transitioned into like normal dating. And so her Instagram is super interesting because like you kind of see like all these trust issues with men and, you know, just, like, the jadedness of, like, being in that space for so long, like, understandably, because, you know, a lot of those men are married, and that can give any girl trust issues if she didn't have them before she was entering into that space, and so it's been so interesting to see her, like, move from one space to the other and start to be in, like, a normal relationship and just navigate communication and trust and all of that, and, Like, I chat with her every now and then over the DMs. Um, Again, I don't know really anything about this woman. But one thing I appreciate about her, her gram, is she'll share screen caps with her text conversations with her man. And, like, she'll just kind of be really open about what she's working on in her communication and, like, you know, calling herself out and, like, you know, just using it as a really interesting education tool for everyone who's kind of been along for the ride with her story. And I remember, like, over the weekend, she posted this interesting conversation where, I guess, her bae is, like, out traveling, and she sent a bunch of, like, critical kind of text messages to him being like, you know, if I was out traveling, I would have already sent you photos, like, 
you know, like, kind of just being really critical, like, why didn't you send me photos, like, I want you to send me photos, like, all this stuff, like, being, like, yeah, critical, like, criticizing, and, like, it wasn't coming from a place of, like, if you did this, I'd be so happy, it was coming from a place of, like, I'm mad you didn't do this, if that makes sense, and so I decided to reach out and be, like, hey, girl, like, are you open to some feedback on this, this exchange, and thankfully, she was, like, yes, and so I gave her this, like, like, what I would have said, kind of, like, based on what I've learned, like, I just gave her, like, I guess a script to use, and I can't remember exactly what it was I said, but, like, coming off the top of my head, it, you know, just, like, going off of kind of what I've learned with all of this, it would have been something like, you know, like, let me just get into my character of (laughs) dating Sabrina, like, I probably would have said something like, hey, babe, like, I hope your flight went amazing, I hope, like, your travel went really well, and that you're not too tired, and you're settling in really well, and I miss you so much already, and I know you're not a big photo taker, but it would make me feel so close to you, and so connected, and so loved, and cared for if you shared some parts of your day with me and just sent photos as you get the chance. I would just love that so much. It would just make me feel so close to you and so happy. Sleep well with like a little emoji. And now thinking like that and speaking like that is like second nature. But it took me a really long fucking time to learn that. And anyways, like I sent this to her and I was like, yeah, feel free to adapt it. Like that's what I would say if I was you. And she did. She, like, wrote her own version, and she sent it, and then the guy responded really well. And I'm really curious to see how the rest of it is going to go. And it was such a cool thing for me to, like, see some of my advice on, like, communication and dating and, like, feminine energy in action. And what I explained to her was, like, if she's out there, and this applies to, like, anybody that would be in this situation, and I used to be like this, you know, like, for sure. So I get it. Um, but what I was explaining to her was like, you know, if you are the one that is continuing to nag this man and saying like, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Like, I'm so upset with you. Like, why didn't you send me photos? If I was traveling, I would have sent you like 20 photos by now, like nagging, complaining, criticizing rather than trying to come at it from a place of like, Hey, I know you must be wiped. If you could do this thing, it would make me feel so connected because like those are two different energies right and so that first way of like coming at the guy and being like critique 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 like what that is is it's trying to control it's controlling energy it's trying to create an outcome but what it actually comes from is like a space of insecurity and vulnerability and instead of trying to get those needs met the need is probably reassurance the need is probably to feel close and proximate and to feel connected and loved and cared for that's probably the need there's probably a fear that that is not you know going to be met but like due to various reasons right um like I know it can be really stressful when people's partners travel especially if it's a new relationship um sometimes even if it isn't right but what I was explaining to her and like what I'm explaining to you guys now is like when you're being that way to somebody you are in your masculine energy you're being aggressive you are pursuing you're nagging, you're controlling, you're criticizing. And it's a negative form of masculine energy. Notice that. A negative form of masculine energy. And so then what happens? The guy is going to retreat. He's going to fuck off. He's not going to text as much. He sure as fuck is not going to send many photos. If he does, it's going to be begrudging. And he's going to be like, I'm tired, fuck off. Basically is what's going to happen. If you're like controlling, controlling, controlling. And like, I've been in her shoes before. I've been in that situation before. And that's exactly what happened. Didn't get me the result that I wanted didn't get me reassurance it didn't get me closeness it just got me pushed further away and then I felt like I had to pursue even more and then it totally fucked up the masculine feminine energy dynamic so what I was doing in the past and what this woman also was doing was pushing the man into the feminine energy space and with the laws of energetic polarity only one party can be in masculine energy at a time only one party can be in feminine energy at a time and in some couples and some relationships this is like constantly like ebbing and flowing and that works for people uh in some relationships it's like 
you know, the roles are a bit more defined. Um, not to get too on the topic of sex right now, but if anyone is familiar with the concept in like BDSM of being a switch, like what that basically means is someone who can switch back and forth between that dominant energy and that receiving energy right? And so I'm not talking about sex right now. I'm just talking about the energy of communication, the energy of two people relating to one another, right? But it's the same idea in terms of the masculine energy, the go-getter energy versus the feminine energy. So like in that example that I gave with this person, and if lady, if you're listening to this and you're offended, I'm using your example. I'm sorry. Don't worry. I'm not calling you out. It's not a bad thing. It's just a learning experience that I think is so interesting for all of us, right? And I just thought this was such a cool learning moment. So, but but the interesting thing about it is like her feminine her feminine energy was like completely gone. And so she was stepping into an unhealthy masculine and then he was pushed into an unhealthy feminine, right? Withholding, withdrawing, but like not from a place of empowerment, from a place of like woundedness, right? And so it was just this like wounded interaction, which like no one wins. And so what I told her is like, no one wins, when we're just critiquing and criticizing and coming from that place of attack when we're feeling vulnerable, right? And so think about it, right? Like in that situation, what she really wanted was closeness, to be chased, to be pursued, to have someone say, hey, I care about you. I'm thinking about you. I'm texting you. I'm sending you my day, right? Which would be masculine energy, But what's so interesting is like when we are in our unhealthy masculine as women and we nag men to like reassure us or whatever, we actually can't receive it anyway. Like it doesn't really land. Have you guys ever noticed that? At least that was true for me back when I was like that, right? Like if I kept nagging a guy for reassurance and he would give it, I still wouldn't really believe it because I asked for it. It means so much more when it's actually just given freely. And so the interesting thing, right, is like if we're able to step back into our feminine energy and lean back, communicate what we want in like that healthy, cute way, the example that I just gave, and then give him the chance to step up. So when we're in our feminine energy and we communicate in that way, loving, kind, honest, making an ask, but not making him bad, not making him evil, not making him wrong, right? Just saying this will make me feel so close to you. This will make me feel so good from a place of pleasure, right? A place of love, a place of care, a place of closeness, working together as a team, not being enemies, right? Then we can lean back in our feminine and wait and watch and see what happens. And a guy will either step up or not. And if he doesn't, then he's probably not the guy for us. Sorry to say, but like, you know, that's the truth. But if he does, then we can actually receive it. Because if we lean back enough in our feminine energy, then the man is able to be empowered to step into his healthy masculine energy and to show up, right? But a man can't do that unless we give him the space and time to be able to do that. We can communicate our needs. We can communicate our desires. It's okay to walk if that's not met. You know, that's fine. I think a lot of women don't want to do that. They would rather nag. At this point in my life, I just am like, okay, bye. (laughs) No problem. (laughs) Clearly it's not a fit. And that clarity means that I'm never in this push and pull dynamic. And if that push and pull dynamic starts to happen and it's like a weird vibe, then I'm like, "Mm -mm, we're good. I'm done. Bye. It's not going to work. Right? And so a lot of women have this scarcity mindset with dating where it's like they push and push and push and push because they think that there's no other man that's going to like them. But it's like there's a bazillion men that will like you. Just like move on. But what I'm trying to say here, like the point of all of this babble is how we communicate is so important. And when we communicate from that grounded and empowered feminine energy, we create the space for the man to show up in his empowered masculine energy. Is that always going to happen? No. But when we are in our empowered feminine energy, that really brings out what is really in a man. And that is a cute phrase that I am stealing from a friend of mine. Um, who is not coaching yet, but I hope she decides to one day. And if you're listening to this, hi, (laughs) please coach. Um, And I really think it's true, right? And so when we are in our empowered feminine energy, 
if a man is capable of stepping up in his empowered masculine, he's going to do it. If he's not, then he's going to like, you know, be fucking a weirdo. And it's going to be really obvious that he's like, acting in a way that just seems very wounded like I'll give examples of that in another episode but actually I think actually episode four of this podcast is all about wounded masculine energy so go listen to that if you haven't already just for some examples of what that looks like you know and so I think this is gonna maybe sound fucking unpopular but I think we as women also need to take some responsibility for how we communicate and I think that's just a thing. And when we are not aware of ourselves and when we're in this space of critic, like being a critic, like, and then we wonder why our relationships suck. Like, it's very interesting, right? And it's like, I've fucking been there, so I get it. And like, I'm only talking about this because I have been there and I remember what it was like to be that way. And I was younger, I was like in my early 20s and like, I was a mess for sure in that regard. Like, I did not know anything about healthy communication because I had nowhere to learn it from. My family was fucked up. And so I had to spend, like, the past decade learning that shit. And I figured it out mostly, I think, now, touch wood. It's always a learning process. I'm always going to learn more. But I felt like it was important to share this with you guys because I feel like this is important. I'm sure a lot of you listening already know this. Like, maybe some of you are already married or already in, like, healthy, committed relationships and you're like, yeah, I already know this, like, whatever, um, but I think there's a lot of single women, especially, that, you know, haven't really learned this yet, and who see communicating in that way as being, like, beneath them, or as being, like, a blow to their ego, or their pride, and I would just, like, encourage you, if that's, like, your knee-jerk reaction to this, is to be, like, a bit triggered, like, just sit with yourself, and just figure out, oh my god, okay, like, what's that about, and, you know, making this change overnight is not going to happen. It's going to be a slow burn. It was a very slow burn for me because at first communicating that way felt fake. It felt inauthentic. But over time, that is how I authentically communicate almost without thinking about it. And if that's not how I communicate with someone I'm dating, it's pretty much always because the person has pushed me into my masculine energy. And that really only happens when the person is not a fit for me, when that person is like, trying to be manipulative or they're trying to be aggressive or they're just insulting me or like doing something that doesn't feel good then it's like okay my empowered masculine can step up and can like get out of the situation and like you know clap back or whatever you know so anyway that's my speech about this um I think it's an important topic it's what I think about a lot and like I don't really want to brag or whatever like because I'm still single and I'm going to be until I'm married. That's kind of like how I see this process. Um, like I haven't figured it all out, but I do think I've learned enough to be able to teach about this and share about it now. And my dating life is really good. You know, I have no complaints. Like, do you occasionally meet the like random crazy person or like mean person? Like, yes, because we live in reality and, you know... Sometimes that's just going to happen and you can remove yourself from the situation. And I don't think any of that is a failure of feminine energy or whatever. I think it's just like, yeah, we live in the world. So like, yeah, sometimes we're going to have bad experiences dating or just like with friendships or in the workplace. Like, you know, people exist. People are people. Wherever there's people, sometimes some of them are going to be like not the greatest, right? But that being said, like a lot of women complain about dating and I can't really relate to that for the most part is my experience since I've started adopting these principles of communication and just my shift in energy, it's just been really awesome. Like even if something doesn't work out, it's like still been an enjoyable experience. And that's just something I want to share with you guys. Uh, Anyone who is interested in learning about that or is curious about it. And so I am going to be doing a soft launch over this month. And so if that's something that you'd like to hear more about, just pop me an email, CEO at sabrinamscott.com. I'm really excited to share about this. I'm also a little bit freaked out to share about it because I'm like, oh my God, everyone's going to try to cancel me. But I don't know. I fucking believe in this with all my heart and it's really changed my life. And the internet is a big place. And so if anyone is not vibing, like it's, that's fine. Like it's not illegal to not listen to me anymore. Like that's fine. Just like, don't be a little bitch and like send me hate mail. (laughs) Cause like who has time for that really? 
And so just as I ask you guys to be brave and inspired and to take risks, that also, that's also what I'm trying to do with bringing this new course into the world. It's probably the most vulnerable thing I've ever created. And in the course, I'm going to talk about my story with gender. It's like, as you guys know, I identified as non-binary for like 20 years. And I had a few realizations over the past few years. And, you know, a lot of that was really heavy. And there's a lot of very spicy things I have to say about the gender stuff. And I know not everyone's going to agree, but I have to speak it because it's my story. And I know I'm not alone in in that experience. And you know, every which way that I got to where I am. And I'm scared to share that, but I'm excited to share that because I know it will lead to some people feeling less alone and less afraid and less, you know, fucking weird. And that's important to me, right? To lead by example and just share, share their journey. Okay, friends. So again, do check Oh, the cat is meowing. How cute. So this is your reminder to check the YouTube for the tarot vibe forecast for the week. So, um, no, it's not my website. It is <laughs> youtube.com slash Sabrina Scott. Check it out. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram yet, please do. It is instagram.com slash Sabrina M. Scott. Again, if you want to email me about literally anything, CEO at Sabrina M. Scott.com. And of course, if you have not signed up for Magic May yet, what the fuck are you waiting for? Sabrina M. Scott.com slash Magic May. 31 days of magical inspiration and prompts in your fucking phone every day for the entire fucking month. How cool is that? I'm so stoked. Anyway, friends, thank you so much for listening. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.